morning to come together as a church Amen. and celebrate our risen Savior. Uh, again, I always stress that this is every day, though we don't get to do something like this every day. Um, so let's get a couple people coming. Uh, let's get before our Lord now in prayer and then we will begin. Let's pray, church. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for the risen Savior that you provided for us, Lord. We we thank you for Christ Jesus, who, when he went to the cross for our penalty, for our sin, and they put him in that grave after he died three days later, Lord, as, as we praise you and worship you, as we recognize every day of our lives, as we celebrate this special time of the year, he has risen. And Lord, we thank you because one day we will be risen with him because we are in Christ and we will be taken with Christ. So, Father, we thank you for this time. We bless this service. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Sing loud, no sins don't like noise. <laughs> <laughs> Put your name on
because he lives. That morning when Mary Magdalene and the other women went to that tomb, full of sorrow, full of uncertainty, they went to that tomb that early morning, not knowing if they were going to be able to roll that stone away that was there, but they were going anywhere with spices to anoint their Lord. And when they got there, they saw that the stone had been rolled away. Rolled away. And they went inside, and there the angel of the Lord was there and said, We know who you're looking for, Jesus of Nazareth, but he is not here, for he has risen. Amen. And now go tell the others. And this would be why there is no more fear for us in Jesus Christ. There's no fear of death because he has risen, because he lives. And we see in the scriptures, as Paul talks about, this is everything. <coughs> The resurrection is everything, and we see it in 1 Corinthians 15. He says, now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you. It is so good to be reminded, isn't it, of the cross of Calvary and the resurrection of our Savior. I want to remind you of this gospel, this good news I preach to you, which you have received, church, which you have taken your stand. They didn't just receive it. They believed it so much they stood on it. They took their stand. By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. Otherwise you have believed in vain. It's this gospel you're saved. This gospel, this good news of Jesus' death and resurrection, that you're saved. You're saved from God's wrath. You're saved from your sinful nature. You're saved from the fires of hell. By this gospel, but only if again you stand firm to it. Unless... You believe in vain. It's possible to believe in something and not really believe it. Right? And this is what he's saying here. If you hold on to it, if you live it, this gospel that I, Paul said that he has given them, that we have received, then you will be saved. For what I received, I passed on to you as first importance. First importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. We see this in the Word of God in the Gospels. That he was raised on the third day, according to the Scriptures. And that he appeared to Peter, and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time. Most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. They have passed away. You want to talk about an eyewitness account. Over 500 people saw him dead, and those 500 people saw him walking around where he has risen. Then he appeared to James and the apostles, and last he appeared to me, one abnormally born. Paul, one of the greatest apostles, I wasn't with Jesus at the time. I didn't get to walk with him like you. But we would know this great gospel would be doubted, especially the resurrection, especially the completion. Though it's not a separate event, the cross and the resurrection are one and the same. When Jesus Christ said it was finished, he already knew he was walking out of that grave, right? But there was many, as what we face today. And Paul deals with this. He says, but if, if, but if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? How can you say that? And this is a very, this is the biggest problem in the world for the church. If there is no resurrection of the dead, then even Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. The very thing that Paul and all the other apostles, the early church fathers, the very thing that they preached, that they lived, was the gospel of Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. And if the resurrection was no good, if there was, if there was no resurrection, then their preaching was fuel. The, the Christian faith was no good. More than that, we are found to be false witnesses about God. For we testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if in fact the dead are not raised. <laughs> Worst thing is that we are going around in the name of God, the only true creator, the only true redeemer. And we're going around telling everybody that he has been raised. That makes us false prophets, false teachers. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And here it is. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You're still in your sins. The very thing God redeemed us back from hell, from our sins. So then, if Christ hasn't been raised, 
and you're still in your sins, you're still headed to hell, then those who have fallen asleep before in Christ, those who have died, then they are in trouble because they're still in their sin. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are people to be most pitied. We live our life for Christ, Paul says. We preach Christ. We're ready to die for Christ in the resurrection. We should be the most pitied people because of, look at how we're living our lives. This is Christianity, though. If there's no resurrection, church, we should be the most pitied people because this is what we do is we live for him. We're ready to die for him. We're ready to die to ourselves. We're ready to give up everything for him. And that's what Paul was saying. We are the most pitied people. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, he says. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. Jesus Christ went to that cross. It was the choice set before him the Father's will. And he went to that cross knowing, knowing what he would do, knowing it was the Father's will. And he went to that cross. But it was not finished. When they put him in that tomb, it was not finished. And three days later, God, the Holy Spirit, and the power of Jesus Christ himself, that, roll, that stone didn't need to be rolled away by no angel. That didn't matter anyway. Because we know that he was walking through walls after that. It didn't matter. But it was the power of God. The power of God that saved us. The power of the Holy Spirit that saved us. The power of Christ himself. The blessed Trinity that saved us. And now we can truly say that he has risen. Because one day we will be risen. If you don't know Jesus Christ, know this. He went on that cross and he took your sin with him. And God the Father slayed him. Slayed him with your sin. And if you turn from your sins and you repent of your sins. And you follow Christ. Not as a belief. Not as some intellectual thing, but it's true following him. You will be saved. Give your life to Jesus Christ if you do not know him. And church, let's start living like we have a risen Savior, that we're going to rise one day, and let's take as many with us as we can. Amen.
Come and we can worship you. <laughs> there is no fear, Father, because you know our name. You know our name, and you're going to call us home. Oh, Father, we praise you for that. And we give you all the glory and the honor, Lord. I pray for everyone here that you bless their families, you bless their time today, Lord. Whatever's going on in their lives, Lord, let them know that they can just run along with you. And they can go to you. Father, encourage your children that may be struggling today with all kinds of things. Lord, may we be a witness for Christ in this community. May we continue to worship you with our lives. Father, we thank you for the beautiful time that we can come together. And as we can continue to come together to worship later as well. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for sending Christ Thank you, Father, for raising Christ. Thank you for one day we will be with you forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you all. There's your son. Good job, son.